Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, we're going to talk about one of the features in QuickBooks Online that can cause some confusion, and that's the role of users. So if you've ever been confused about what a user is, how to know what user you are, and when you need to add a new user, then stay tuned to this video. Hello, my name is Aaron Patrick. I am a chartered accountant, a certified UK trainer with a fancy new logo, that QuickBooks chap on the internet, and also head of accounts here at Boffix. Now, now, today's topic is really straightforward, but it is an area where some people do get confused with. So let's do a deep dive into what the world of users is within QuickBooks Online. In a nutshell, if you already have access to QuickBooks Online, now basically, if you already have access to QuickBooks Online, either by the browser or by your mobile phone, then you are technically already a user. But what does that actually mean? And how do you add new users? And what type of users are there? Well, that's what we're gonna talk about today. So let's waste no more time. Let's get straight into the product and talk about exactly what a user is. As you can see at this point in time, I'm in QuickBooks Online. Now for me to find my users, I'm gonna go up to my company cog in the top right hand corner. From there, I'm gonna to go to your company and then manage users. Now, as you can see in this particular company, we have two active users at this point in time. And basically an active user is someone who can get access to QuickBooks. So if you need multiple people to use QuickBooks, then that's where the user aspect becomes really useful. Now, the amount of users you have depends on which version of QuickBooks you're using. So with QuickBooks Online, you have QuickBooks Simple Start, QuickBooks Essentials, and QuickBooks Plus. And basically each one of those tiers has a different limit to how many users you can have. Also, if you have an accountant like Boffix who actually pay for the license on your behalf, then the added bonus is you're allowed unlimited users. So if you're looking to get more and more users on your QuickBooks channel, one of the things to do is use our fancy little link at the bottom, go over to our e-store, and that way you can get yourself discounted versions of QuickBooks Online and get unlimited users for the privilege. But what does different users have access to? Well, let's have a look. First of all, you can see I have two different users here and I can see what their email account is just there so I can see and use their different email accounts. Now I'm in as a primary admin and primary admin basically means that I am the owner of the license. I'm the one who has full ownership of what goes on in this particular license. Doesn't necessarily mean I pay for the license, but it means that I am the owner. Now, if I need to add more users, I'm going to use this handy little add user button on here. And that's when we get to discuss about what type of users there are. And when I started this video, I mentioned that depending on which version of QuickBooks you have, depends on how many users you are limit wise. Now, one difference to that is there are certain types of users that don't count towards your limit and some do. So let's have a look. Your first question when you add a new user is, do you want to add a standard user, a company admin, or a reports only user and a time tracking only user. Notice how that these top two are count toward your user limit. So that's how many users you are allowed in total, where these bottom two don't count toward your user limit. Now let's cover the reports only first. Now the only thing they can see is a reports only. It's almost like a read only access for clients. Now the first one we're gonna go through is reports only. And effectively that's a read only access. They can only see reports and they can only see what reports available. Really useful for those users where they need to have an eye of what's happening in a business, but you don't want to give them access that they could potentially break it or they could do something that you don't want them to do in a business. So consider that reports only access as a way to give access to someone who needs to see what's going on in the business, but you don't want to let them have any option to break anything. And then we have time tracking. You see, time tracking is all about a useful area of in QuickBooks where you can actually set it so that you have the ability to be able to let another user fill in timesheets on your behalf. Especially if you're doing projects or if you're making sure that all your time has been accounted for, that can be a powerful solution. And that means is those users can't have access to any other part of QuickBooks Online. 
The only thing they can actually do is create and submit timesheets on your behalf. So if you're looking to kind of up your ante and you're trying to bring in those costings and make sure that that's there, consider that time tracking only option as a way of making sure that you can give employees a time tracking only option to QuickBooks so they can't see anything else that's going out there, like how much people are being paid or anything like that. But what they can see and can do for you is complete the time area. What we're mostly interested in is the count towards your user limit. And when you do that, you have two options, and these are your generic users. You have a standard user and you have a company admin. Now, company admin means they have access to absolutely everything. You can't tell them that they can't see that. You can't tell them what they can and can't see. You can't really do much with them. They have full access to there. So you really need to consider this for your high level employees or high level management. Remember that if they can have company access, company admin rights, they have access to see everything that's going through the bank account, they can see payroll, they can see everything. So do make sure that you only consider the very few people that you trust in a business to be your company admin. The next access is standard user. And that's the one we're gonna look at in more detail because when we go to standard user, we get to decide what they can and can't see. So for example, as a standard user, you can say what access do you want to have QuickBooks? And we have a really handy little guide at the right hand side to see what they can and can't do. Because we can either access to all of QuickBooks or we can limit them to only a certain area. And when that happens on the right hand side, we can see what they can and what they can't do. So if I'm limiting my user to only customers or only suppliers or both, then that means that they can go in and deal with customer areas like raising sales invoices and that sort of items, but they can't see our bank account. So that can be really powerful because imagine you've got a member of staff who you want to raise sales invoices on your behalf, but you don't want them to see a bank account because you don't want them to see how much their people are being paid. That can be really powerful. And I think this is where you've got the opportunity to really think about what you want that user to do. So if I had a person who I only want to be raising sales invoices, then I would limit them to only customers and I'd press next. From here, you then get the following option. Do you want that user to be able to add, edit or remove fellow users? Well, basically what we're doing now, do you want them to have access to the screen? Yes or no. Do you want the user to edit company info? So do you want to give them the option to go into other areas of your back account, like your company settings and everything else? And do you want them to play around with that? Yes or no? And do you want them to manage subscriptions? So do you want them to be able to see how much you're paying for QuickBooks Online and maybe edit them options as well? They're the three options you get. When you press next, the final thing you need to do is you put their first name in, you put their last name in and their email address. The email address will become their user ID. Once you've put that user ID in and you've put that email, the first name and last name, you'll save that and send that off. The user will then receive an invitation once they accept that invitation, they will put their own password in. Now, as the user IDs and people who are dealing with users within QuickBooks Online, we don't know what that password is and we've got no way of knowing what that password is. But the user will be able to choose their own and then if they ever need access to your file, they will go into QuickBooks Online on any browser or on their mobile app. And from there, they'll be able to put their user ID, which is their email address and the password they've selected. That will then give them user access dependent on what you've set when you've added them as a user. Okay, so that's great. That's the users tab within Manage Users. But notice we also have accounting firms just here. Now accounting firms is the next step of user access, if you like. And that's where your accountant or the person that you are using for bookkeeping or the person who is paying for your subscription will have access to your books. Now, as accountants, we get a little bit extra. So you'll see in the top left hand corner, I have this accountant's toolbox just here. That's because I am signed in as an accountant. So I get a few extra bells and whistles. And on the left hand side, I also have accounting review and overview section and a few other bits so that I can make sure that I'm looking after my clients as cleanly, as successfully as possible. Now, any company or license within QuickBooks Online has a maximum of two accountants. And the idea why there'll be two of you is the fact that you might have a different bookkeeper to your accountant, or you may be like some of our clients have where it's Boffix is paying for their subscription, but they have another accountant that actually does their accounts for them. Either way, the reason you have two slots there is to give you that flexibility. Now, in this situation, you can see here that we've got Aaron Patrick, Trainer 12. 
So basically I have Boffix and I have Intuit UK Training as my two different accountants I've got on this file. Now to invite a new accountant, if I had space left, I'd press the invite button here. I'd put their name and email and I'd send that invite over. Now, if you do have an accountant using your system, you wanna be making sure you use that invite accounting firms option and get them into QuickBooks that way. That will give them all the power they need to be able to do your work for you properly and also gives them the opportunity to take over your license if you're paying for the license yourself. So in a nutshell then, adding users to QuickBooks Online is pretty straightforward. You go to the company cog, your company, manage users. Once you've done that, from there, you'll be able to go in and use the add user functionality where you're gonna add an individual user and you get to dictate what they can and can't see or you're gonna to go to the accounting firm area and add a brand new accountant from there. Remember, an accountant has the ability to see those extra bits for you and they'll also have the option to file VAT returns, etc., under their VAT portal. That's the users in a nutshell. Now, let me know below. Is there anything else you wanted to know about? Is there anything else that would be useful for you to understand regarding to world of use users? Put in the comments below and I'm sure we'll do a follow-up video on that one. But also, do let me know, how do you find adding users? Is it something that's been working well for you? Has it been problematic? I know for some people, finding out what type of users they need can sometimes be a bit of a minefield. So hopefully now we've gone through those options for you, you're going to be better placed to be able to decide what is the right user for your particular situation. And there we have it, users within QuickBooks Online. Straightforward and simple enough, but does cause quite a few problems if not done right. So take your time, have a look at it, go over this video a couple more times if you're unsure and reach out to us at hello at if you have any questions whatsoever. My name's been Aaron Patrick. As always, it's been an absolute pleasure to do this video for you. And I'm sure I'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, all that jazz. Let's get this channel out to as many people as possible so that more people can understand the world of QuickBooks. And hopefully that way, their business doesn't just survive but it thrives. That's the Boffix motto. Remember to head over to the Boffix store if you want to get a discounted version of QuickBooks Online. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. Cause I can get him out of my head I don't care what we do, everything's really new Even if we're staying bad My heart is saying yeah, 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 yeah You know I want him now, 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 now My heart is saying yeah, 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 yeah Hello and thank you for watching that video. What you may not know is this channel that you've watched this video from is part of a wider group. That wider group is called Apple Core Production. And the three channels that we have involved are as follows. Aaron Patrick, the QuickBooks chat. Boffix Tax Tip. Finally, we have Apple Core Live and Geeky. All the links and everything are down below in the description. But it really mean a lot to us if you can go and give a like to the other channels as well.